Now that we've gone over the basics of project design in REDCap, let's review a few tips for data management. First, we'll discuss naming your variables. So your field names or variable names will be referenced in any branching logic, calculated fields, piping, or reports you create, or any statistical analysis that you perform. So naming your variables properly is very important. REDCap allows for letters, numbers, and underscores in the variable name, and the variable must begin with a letter. Your variable names should be concise and meaningful, and be sure to take into account what kind of variable names will work best for the program or statistical package that you'll be using to analyze the data later on, whether it's Excel or SPSS, SAS or Stata. Be sure to find out whether your program prohibits any special characters or has any character limits for the variable name so that you don't encounter issues when trying to import or analyze your data set. Your variable names must also be unique and REDCap will not allow you to have any duplicate variable names in the same project. Once you've moved to production, the variable names are also considered final and can't be changed. So make sure that you've thoroughly reviewed and are happy with your variable names before moving to production and starting data collection. So here are some additional tips. Next, avoid capturing data in free text boxes as much as possible, especially when you're capturing dates or numerical values, phone numbers, emails, etc. As much as possible, we recommend adding validations to your text box fields so that you can restrict the kind of values that can be entered into those fields. And when applicable, use multiple choice fields or check boxes to capture your responses. This will help to drastically reduce data entry error and will make things much easier for your team, especially your data manager or your statistician during data cleaning and analysis. We also recommend that you do not rely too heavily on calculated fields for scoring your questionnaires or certain lab metrics. REDCap can perform the basic arithmetic functions fairly accurately, and of course we understand that these kind of calculations do come in handy, especially when you need a value to be calculated immediately during data collection. For example, if you're calcul calculating age during a screening visit, or if you need to calculate a date difference for a survey invite to be sent out. The calculated fields are great in these instances, but any values and scores that you're calculating in REDCap should be checked by your team statistician during the data cleaning and analysis phase. So make sure that you're capturing all of the fields that are necessary to be able to check those calculations outside of REDCap later. So for example, if you were uh, calculating BMI on a form, we recommend that you uh, make sure that your form is, is also capturing height and weight. Um, or if you were to be calculating age at screening on a form, make sure that your form is not only capturing the participant's date of birth, but is also capturing the date of screening so that later on a statistician can check those ages, you know, at a later phase. We also recommend that you try to use consistent coding throughout your form. So similar multiple choice options should have similar numerical values. For example, if you have several yes or no questions on a form, it may be helpful for no and yes to have the same numerical value each time it appears on a form. Um, of course, if you're using a standardized form or a form that requires reverse coding, you might find it beneficial to use those codes that are provided by the questionnaire. But in most cases, try to keep coding consistent throughout your form. We also recommend that you try and use the same date format throughout your project. Um, this will just make things a little bit easier during your analysis phase. This next topic is very, very important. We will discuss moving from development mode to production mode. When you first create a project, it starts out in development mode. And up to this point, everything we've demonstrated in this training has been done in development mode. Development mode is the time to develop your project. You are able to easily build your instruments, set up your project design, add your events, etc., and these changes are made to the project in real time. You can also add your project type, any IRB information, the name of your PI and email, and project description if applicable. And development mode is also the best time to test your instruments. All of REDCap's features are available to users while in development mode, so after you've created your instruments and set up your design, test, test, test as thoroughly as possible. Our minimum requirement is to test each form at least three times, 
but we recommend testing more than that, especially if you are continuing to make changes to your project while you're in development mode. As you're testing, pay attention to your instrument design. Make sure your questions are clear and that you've arranged your instruments in an order that will complement your study visit flow. We recommend asking team members to test the forms and review for clarity and flow as well. And be sure to test all of the features that you're hoping to use. If you'll be capturing data via surveys, make sure your instruments are enabled as surveys, practice sending out your survey invitations, and be sure to practice entering your data into your instrument in survey mode so that you know what the participant will see when they access your survey. We also recommend exporting a copy of your data set with test data in it, and to have your team's statistician or data manager or whoever is going to be looking at the data review the data set to make sure that the structure of the database is going to work for their purposes. Even though all features are available to you in development mode, you should never enter real data into a project that is still in development mode. That is because all data that is entered while in development mode is regarded as test data, and there are no safeguards in place to keep that data secure or prevent data loss. If you were to change a variable name or to modify branching logic, data can be erased immediately and permanently. And this is fine for test data, but of course it's not ideal for capturing real data. The moment you are ready to begin data collection, please take the steps to move your project to production mode. Okay, so here's an example of a test project that you can see is still in development mode. And you can see that because the project status over here on the left hand side is listed as development. So let's say we've thoroughly tested our project and we're ready to move to production and start collecting real data. What we'll do is navigate to the project setup tab over here. We'll scroll down to the bottom of the page and we'll click to move the project to production. You'll see this reminder to make sure that you've tested each instrument at least three times in your database before requesting that a project is moved to production. So if you've thoroughly tested your form or forms, you can hit I agree. And you'll have the option to keep your test data or to clear it all out. So I'm going to choose to delete all of my test data. Then you can select yes to move to production status. And once you click this, a request will be sent to the REDCap support team and an administrator will review your project and get in touch with you as soon as possible. So once you're in production mode, you'll see that this project status over here on the left hand side will change to reflect that it is in production. And you'll also see that things are about the same in your project but now REDCap's main priority is to keep all of the data that you enter safe. And while you can still make changes to your project, changes will not be made in real time, but rather drafted and submitted for review to prevent unwanted data loss. So of course, no matter how thoroughly you test your project, once data collection begins, you're bound to notice things that can be tweaked, or maybe you have a modification to your IRB protocol you can still make modifications to your project post-production. So in order to do that, you're going to navigate to the online designer. And you'll notice that you can't just enter any form and start making changes, but you have to first enter draft mode up at the top before you can make any changes to your data database rather. So once you're in draft mode, you can start drafting the changes that you need to make to the project. So if I just navigate to the survey that I want to start modifying, um, you can click on the pencil icon to start making changes to individual fields. Now you'll notice that there will be some changes that you can't make. For example, you can't change the variable name in the project because that would result in data loss, but you can make changes to the field label and if this were um, a multiple choice field, for example, I could change um, the option labels here. You can also add new variables and new instruments as well. 
Again, as a precaution to keep data safe, none of the changes that you make in draft mode will be made immediately. So if you have people that are currently taking your surveys or if you have visits that are ongoing, people are entering data in real time, nothing is going to be disturbed for them. Um, but in order for these drafted changes to be reflected in the real project, you're going to have to click Submit Changes for Review. Now, if the changes that you've drafted pose no risk to existing data, say you've only added new variables or what have you, then your changes will be approved automatically. But if there are any changes that have the potential to erase data or impact the validity of your data, a request will be sent to the REDCap support team and an administrator will reach out to you first. Okay, so just to recap, when you're ready to move to production, make sure you've customized your main project settings, You've designed your data collection instruments and enabled uh, any instruments as surveys if applicable. You've defined your events and designated your instruments if your project is longitudinal. You've enabled any optional modules or features that you're hoping to use during data collection, such as repeatable forms or the scheduling module. You've tested all of your forms thoroughly with a minimum of three complete records. Then you can send a request to move your project to production mode, and the REDCap team will review and move to production. If you need to make a change post-production, you must first enter draft mode via the online designer, click on your instruments and draft your desired changes, submit the changes for review, and if necessary, the REDCap team will review and get in touch. As a final note, as data collection is ongoing, you can visit the logging module at any time to view a record of all activities that have been performed in the project, like data entry, changes to data, changes to instruments, or any system activities, such as when automatic survey invitations have been triggered or any alerts have been sent. So the logging module captures the time, the date, the username, and the action performed. Uh, by every user in the project. So this may be useful to those who are coordinating the project while it's in use. Thank you for following our REDCap training module. We hope this has given you a basic introduction to REDCap and how it can be used to enter data, administer surveys, or manage projects. Again, REDCap at Children's National can be accessed at this link. You can also check out the Help and FAQ section in REDCap for more detailed information about how REDCap operates. And if you have any questions or encounter any issues while building your REDCap project, or if you need access to REDCap, please do not hesitate to contact us via our Children's National Support Team form. And a REDCap administrator will reach out to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much.